more near to Christ Jesus. So the way I kind of use Jesus in the book, he's like the beat Jesus, the Jesus of, of Beatitude and Sermon on the Mount, but like the beatnik Jesus, the broken down and humble Jesus. So uh, the born-again dynamic that comes down from post-Puritan times to be always converting and always converted places a radical burden on the self as a site of renewal and word, world change, what Emerson termed unsettling. Even as conversion became surrounded on one side by deconversion, the rejection of prior beliefs, and on the other side by counterconversion, or the turns to alternative beliefs and quote. Crucial to this dynamic of turning around to one life are the powers of becoming semiotic, as I touch upon in my discussion of Henry Fukuhaya's adoption of Christian language and, and codes. Always converted, turning upon the past tense of convert, rather more narrowly means fixed, set upon in belief. Always converting with the stress on the present tense means always experimenting, always open to story, subject to change. What Kirouac calls souls on the road. Uh, and then a recent, this is in, from the introduction, but um, the Pew Forum on Religion revealed that Americans not only change jobs, change the places where they live, change their married partner, they change religions quite, quite a bit. It's something like 70% that either won't go from one form of religion to another or uh, from one brand of Christianity to another. So, uh, Conversion in the poems and sermons of an American climate may stand for some kind of unofficial religion that has long pervaded American culture, from its theo-haunted polity to its quasi-pragmatic philosophy of belief, and out into its popular culture, and may depend upon forces that Harold Bloom regards as more Emersonian than Christian in its embrace of self-relying. Self-relying means the turn, turn towards an unhoused religion of desettlement that relies on the self's power of spontaneity and desublimation to break conformist mold via aversion. As Emerson affirmed of the drive to convert a deadened life world and reaching as self, a transition uh, into becoming different and reborn as spirit man, this one fact the world hates that the soul becomes. Yeah, and Emerson, so Emerson called this conversionary power self-reliance, and ultimately he meant by it um, God-reliance. Uh, now, um, of course, like for African Muslims in Emerson's time, to the racial contrary, conversion to Islam was troubled by interdiction, forced con deconversion, pseudo-conversions, and very often reconversion to faith in Allah. Bloodhounds and barbed wire fences on the Underground Railroad to New England and Canada, Frederick Douglass realized in Emerson Durer, surrounded black conversion as a turn to freedom and amplified self-expression. Douglass nonetheless activated and embodied this chain and has had an unceasing impact upon his nation and the world from his day. Now I'm not going to talk a lot about Barack Obama, but I have, a, I have some things where I mentioned that um, his conversion to Pentecostal Christianity was part of his conversion into Chicago ward politics. And, but he was very much influenced by Malcolm X, the black Muslim conversion that he talks about in, um, um, what's the name of Barack Obama? <laughs> so which, Barack Obama's book, what's the title? The Father's Dreams. Yeah, no, Dreams from Dreams. From, from my father, yeah, that's when I mentioned where he says that he saw that Malcolm X and black Muslim experience enable the power of self formation, and um, that there, you know, he, he saw a kind of poetics of self creation that was coming through um, the black um, Muslim experience. Malcolm X. So, um, yeah. Now, 
so anyway, you, you see the general direction of where I'm, I'm turning in, 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 that, in that direction. Now, um, this is more on a Pele Haofa, I'll, I'll turn to next, um, and uh, counter conversion. Now, a Pele Haofa was a minister's son and was a social scientist who became a fiction writer. So he converted from social science to fiction writing. He converted from Christianity to poly, to, to Pacific-based polytheism. polytheism. And, um, and then also converted from a, a theory of, of um, world system dependency into a refigured vision of Oceania and a kind of ecumenical vision of transformation he called um, Oceania. Um, yeah, so, so the, this chapter I call it Writing Down a Lava Rope. There's a very famous essay, it was really uh, had a huge impact in the interior Pacific, um, Our Sea of Islands. And um, Haofa talks about the experience he had on the big island of. Hawaii, where he, he was about to give, he was invited to give a talk, and he, um, his road to Damascus was the road to Kona, where he saw the, you know, how huge Pacific Islands were when connected to oceans, and also he, he saw the volcano sort of expanding the space of the islands, and so um, he began to, um, Refigure his vision of, of the Pacific into the vision of Oceania, um, and then what, I, what I'm trying to do ultimately, is, you know, is to try to figure a vision of Oceania that's like has the potentiality of ecological coalition from different sites in the Pacific, including Taiwan, and you know, I'll come back to that um, in a, you know. I hope I can. <laughs> um, but let me just read a bit of the, um, the, the chapter, um, chapter four, writing down um, the lava road. Uh, yeah, Apele Haofa registered his autobiographical experience of counterconversion via an evocative sensibility for Oceania in a vision of place and identity linking the sublimity of the volcanic island on the big island to vast waters, Moana Nui of the Pacific. Tongan offspring of Pacific Islander missionary to Papua New Guinea and prodigal son of social anthropology as well. Apele Haofa had become what Emerson has called a strange crab fruit of worship. Islands in the far sea were reframed into an interconnected sea of islands alive with mobility, metaphors, and mappings, generative of action, community, and hope, that do not fit the terms or needs of the American lake. Uh, however, before this new vision of oceanic becoming, like some Saul persecuting the primitive Christians before the second birth into St. Paul, Haofa had been aligned by his dependency models to it articulating a vision of the Pacific that stressed forces of containment, denigration, and limitation, if not death. Soon the realization dawned on me, Haofa confesses, I was acting